So up until fairly recently, I was just using the Python shell as a calculator, and you know what? That works pretty well most of the time. But I felt like trying something new out, and today we're going to have a look at one of those programs. And the one we're looking at today is something called Kitsch. Kit? Kitsch? Kit? I don't know how to say it. It's spelled like quiche without the E on the end. So I have no idea how this word's supposed to be said. But anyway, it's a little calculator written in C, and I think it's pretty cool. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So, as always, let's just start from the GitHub page. I'll get to these other tabs I have up here in just a moment, but let's just go through the normal stuff we go through. So first up, what is Kitsch? So, Kitsch is a advanced terminal calculator. I think that's... It's not really fair to call it that, because it's missing a function to print out pi, and e and a couple of other constants should probably be there. So, it does a lot of stuff that you're probably never going to use, like logs and cosines and things like that, but it doesn't have pi, it doesn't have e, and that's really annoying. But anyway, so, basically this is what it can do. So you can do square roots, absolute value, natural logs, sine, cosine, tangent, floor, and ceiling. So if you want to install this program, there isn't a build in the AUR, but what you can do with it is very simple. All you're gonna have to do is clone the repo, and then just run the make file. So run make, and then run sudo make install. If you want to give it a different name, instead of using kitsch, Keet, once again, I still have no idea how to pronounce this, but if you want to give it a different name, when you run sudo make install, you can pass it a name argument, and I've just called it calc like it doesn't here, just because that's a bit easier to use. So let's just test this out and see how well it works, and see what happens when we try to break it. So let's go calc, and type in just a letter. So it will print out zero and then say warning invalid token. So it should probably not even do this part here. It should just do the warning invalid token, but it works well enough. It's not a big deal that it does that because it has the warning there. You still know that it's not working, but it probably shouldn't output any result, but it, it's not a big deal as I said. So let's try some other stuff. So let's go one divided by zero. So... Um, no, that's supposed to just not even be correct. You're probably not going to do 1 divided by 0. For regular math that actually makes sense, it works fine. But I guess with the failure cases, it's going to do some weird stuff. So it's fine with the first one. The second one, I'm not sure how I would handle that. Probably just say, like, division by 0 error or something instead of doing infinity. But I guess that's fine. Let's just try typing in infinity and see what happens. No, it treats it as an invalid character. Okay, that's interesting. So, instead of getting negative about it, let's see what it can do. So you can do all your basic math stuff, so we can go calc, and then go say like 5 times 3. It behaves like a calculator. This is exactly what you'd expect it to do, so you can do division. You don't just have to use integers, you can also use floating point numbers. So if you want to do like, I don't know, 10.7 divided by 3.6, then that'll let you do that. You also have the option of actually changing the rounding and also the precision. I can't remember what the difference between the two is. I should remember it. So for precision, it says the number of decimals to be used for the numbers. And then for round, it says the number of decimals to round the result. Now those sound very similar to me, and I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. So if we do precision three and round three, they give you the exact same result. Someone's probably gonna tell me what the difference between those two are. I can't remember what it actually is though, but I don't use them anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me in the first place. So one thing I did notice, and this isn't a problem with the program, this is a problem with the way that ZSH handles this interactive shell. So if we do factorial, so five factorial, the exclamation mark symbol is treated as a special symbol within ZSH to do events. I'm not really sure what they mean. I don't ever actually use them. So you have to escape it if you're gonna do it like this. So if we go five backslash, and then exclamation mark, that'll actually work. But if we remove the backslash, then we'll see that it brings up this special sort of prompt. Once again, not really sure what that actually is, but it is just a thing to keep in mind if you are using it from the interactive shell. It will work if you do it without the quotes though. So if we do it like this, then it will just give you the result properly. The same is true if you put the exclamation mark on the other side. So if we do it like this, we're gonna have to actually escape it. So we do it like that, it works. If we do it without that, then it will treat it as an event. So what else can you do? So you have like square roots and things like that. So let's just try those out. So we go calc and then say SQRT and then square root of, I don't know, four. Square root of four is two, that makes sense. You can get the absolute values. So the absolute value is basically remove the sign. So if we do negative 55, the absolute value of negative 55 is just 55. 
which it seems like does not work. Okay, I haven't seen that before. Maybe if we do it the other way around, so negative 55. Okay, that works if you do it like that, but if you do it the other way around, it doesn't work. Okay, I guess that function just behaves weirdly, but it works with the other one. So if we do uh, four and then square root, this will give us the same result as doing square root four. So I guess that one just doesn't work in a certain order. I haven't seen that before, that's interesting. So you also have natural log, so we can do um, log four. That will give us log four. I presume that's correct. I don't actually know my log values. You have sine, so we're not gonna go through all of this, but you have sine, cosine, tangent. So those behave like you would expect them to. You know what, might as well just go through them. It's only a couple of characters to write. So yeah, those work as you would expect them to, nothing too special there. And you also have floor and seal. So floor will basically remove everything after the decimal place. So if we go floor, 5.6789, sure then that will just give us five. But if we do seal instead, then it will just round up to six. So if we just run that, so seal, as we can see, that gives us the result that we expected. So you might be wondering about these tabs that I have open then. So let's actually just go through basically how this calculator works. So if we go calc with the, let's just give it a bit of a formula to work through. So here we go, we'll give it this, and then we we'll give it the dash VVV option. So what we'll see is it'll show us the tokens. I'll move my webcam over. It'll show us the tokens, it'll show us postfix notation, and it'll show us the result. So what is postfix notation, you might be wondering. So most calculators that you've probably used out there, and this calculator, when you actually write stuff into it, uses a notation called infix notation. So infix notation is basically where the operators appear between the operands. So this isn't a very efficient way for a computer to work through a statement like this. There's a much better way to do it, and one of the common ways that it can be done is through something called reverse Polish notation. Now, that's not the page I wanted, it's this one here. So reverse Polish notation, also known as postfix notation. Now there's also a prefix notation, but this is what this one uses. So postfix notation is where the operands are before the operators that actually operate on them. So if we look at this, so three, four plus. So as we can see in here, this is basically what it's using. So it's using reverse Polish notation. So five, four, three, multiply, and then plus. So I think the best way to demonstrate how this works isn't by looking at an array, it's by looking at it as a tree. So let's have a look at it like this. So this is a bit of a statement I found online from teachict.com. I guess credits to those guys for making this image. And I'll basically explain how this works. So basically, if you've never worked with a tree before, you've got a node at the top, which is called the root, then all of the nodes in between the last nodes on the end and the root are called branches, then these nodes on the end are called leaves. So that's, it's not too important, I just wanted to get that notation out of the way. So basically what you'll do is you go all the way down the left side until you hit the end, so until you hit a leaf node, and then you'll store this value in memory, and then you'll go back up and come down here and work out the result of this here. So you'll come up here, you go down here, you'll work out the result of this, so you hit a four. So now you go back up and you have this plus. So a plus needs to operate on something. The plus is gonna operate on this five. So the result of this section is nine. And then this that we had before can then be multiplied with this nine we have here. And then we go back up and we have this minus sign right here. So the 54 that we have here can then be minus with this 25. And as you can see, that's pretty much how that works. So now you've worked out the result of this side. So the result of this side will be what? 29. So the result of this side is 29. So now you've worked out the result of this side. So then you can go to the next left node. So the next left node now is on the right side. So let's go down that. So we go to the right side and then we go to left. So here we have a two. So we go back up, we have this plus. So two plus something. We go down the right side now. So we have a three. So two plus three. So that'll give us five. So the result is whatever the result of this side is divided by the five here. So that's basically how it works. Now, why is it also far quicker? Now, the reason for that is because you can completely ignore brackets. So as you notice, the brackets that are in here are completely removed. So the computer doesn't have to actually worry about those bracket placements. Also, trees are a very quick structure to navigate like this. So you save quite a bit of time on that as well. Now, obviously you're gonna have to convert it from your normal infix notation to the reverse Polish notation, but the processing time on that is basically negligible. So that was basically my attempt at a bit of a computer science 101 lesson. So hopefully you guys got something useful out of that. So back to the actual program now, how am I actually using this? So I don't usually use it just for my terminal. What I do is I have a script, I've just called it decalc. 
So D calc. And basically all this is, is it will open up a D menu prompt to enter an equation, and then it will just put it into calc. Now the reason I can't just pipe it directly into calc is actually another weird problem with it. So let's just bring up this. I'll show you what it actually does. So I didn't mention this before, but it has an interactive mode. So if we run calc like this, it basically just opens it up in a prompt. So we can do whatever we want in here. So 5 plus 5, uh, 5 times 4, things like this. So this is the interactive mode. Now, for some reason, can I just put out like that? No, how do I quit? I guess I just have to use control C. Anyway, now the problem that happens is if we echo something into this, so let's say 5 plus 5, and then we pipe that into calc, what you would expect is it would actually interpret this as a string to actually be interpreted by the program. It doesn't do that though, it just tries to allocate memory and then dies. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but for some reason it doesn't accept pipes. So you've got to handle it in a different way. And I've just decided to do that with Xargs. So Xargs dash capital I, that basically just means set up an argument to pass into something. I'm using the percentage sign and then just running calc percentage. And then what I'm doing with that is just making a notification with the result of the equation. So let's just have a look at how that works. So I've just got it bound to super A. So as we can see, it brings up a little D menu prompt to enter an equation. So let's just enter something simple like, I don't know, seven factorial. So as we can see up here, it'll just output the results. So even if I do things that don't work, like say I type in a letter up here, it'll just print out everything that the program prints out. So that's just how I like working with it. I know I could just do it from the terminal like we were doing before, but most of the time when I'm using a calculator, I am either in my web browser or I'm doing something else. I don't really want to bring up a dedicated terminal just to do a bit of a calculation. If I can do it in a notification, that's probably going to be a bit easier for me. So obviously, that'll be up to you how you want to do it, but that's just how I like working with it. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you want to check out this program, I'll leave a link to the GitHub page down below. So feel free to go check that out. I think it's a really cool program, even though it does seem to have some problems that I didn't know about, like that weird ABS problem. But apart from that, it works perfectly fine as a calculator. So I think that's pretty much everything for this. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links. So it'll be like my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So go check those out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below. So that'll be my Patreon. I might add some extra stuff like um, subscribe star at some point, but it'll be my Patreon and various other donate links. So go check those out down below. But obviously, as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you don't have to. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my content on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.